this is Judy Winehouse, and I'm coming from Praise Fellowship in DeSoto, Missouri. It's October 9th, 2011. And I was going to speak about why Christians shouldn't celebrate Halloween. And I'm going to be reading most of this. Um, Halloween, is it a kid's treat or a pagan trick? Many Christians celebrate holidays such as Halloween without thinking about their origins or true meaning. It is impossible to separate Halloween from the Druids because they originated the holiday. Yes. For several hundred years before Christ, the Celts inhabited what is now France, Germany, England, and Scotland, and Ireland. Celtic priests were called Druids. These people were eventually conquered by the Romans. Information about the Celts and Druids come from Caesar and the Roman historians. Greek writings from about 200 BC and very early records found in Ireland Greek and Roman writings about the Druids dwell heavily on their, their frequent and barbaric human sacrifices. The ancient Irish texts say little about human sacrifices, but details, but detail the Druids' use of magic to raise storms, lay curses on places, kill by the use of spells, and create magical obstacles. Human sacrifices. Davies, however, a 16th century writer who traced his family lineage directly back to Druid priests who fought against Caesar, clearly describes the human sacrifices of his ancestors and the secret sacrifices still performed regularly by the Druids of his time. By 47 AD, Rome finally defeated the Druids in Britain and outlawed human sacrifices. The few remaining Druids went underground. Today, a, group, a growing group of people claiming to be direct Druid descent still practice their religion, including human sacrifice. Those in England still perform ceremonies at Stonehenge. November 1st was the Celtic New Year. October 31st was celebrated by the Druids with many human sacrifices and a festival honoring their sun god, Shemhain, the Lord of the Dead. They believe that the simple souls of those who died during the year were in a place of torment and would be released on only if Shemhain was pleased with their sacrifices. Monks fascinated by the Druids. English records told of the fascination that the Catholic monks had with the powerful Druids, and the Druids soon became important members of their monasteries. Pope Gregory the Great decided to incorporate the Druid holidays into the church. He made the pro proclamation, they are no longer to sacrifice beasts to the devil, but they may kill them for food to praise of God and give thanks to the giver of gifts for his bounty. Pope Gregory III moved the church festival to October 31st, from October 31st to November 1st and called it All Hallows or All Saints Day. Pope Gregory IV decreed that today was to be universal church observance. The true Halloween comes from All Hallows Eve. The founding fathers of America refused to permit the holiday to be observed because they knew it was a pagan holiday. Halloween was not widely celebrated in the U.S. until about 1900. Mm -hmm. In the 1840s, there was a terrible potato famine in Ireland, which sent thousands of Catholic Irish to America, and they brought Halloween with them. The modern custom of going from door to door, asking for food and candy, goes back to the time of the Druids. They believe that sinful, lost souls were released upon the earth by Shemhain for, the, for one night on October 31st while they were awaited their judgment. They were thought to throng around the houses of the living and were greeted with banquet-laden tables. People greatly feared these spirits and thought that the spirits would harm and even kill them if the sacrifices that they gave did not appease Shemhain. They carved demonic faces into pumpkins or large turnips placing a candle in them to keep the evil spirits away from their homes. The tradition of bobbing for apples and giving out nuts came from a Roman addition to the Druid New Year's Eve. The Romans worshipped Pomona, who was the goddess of harvest. They combined their harvest festival to Pomona with Halloween. Very little archaeological evidence of the Druids have been found but there is an excellent agreement between the Roman and the Irish doc documents. Both clearly state the knowledge of the Druids was never committed to writing, but passed from generation to generation by oral teaching. This was to protect their secrets. In his writings, Davis, Davies included 
that he came under much persecution by his family for putting into writing his information about the Druids. The same is true today. Nothing is put into writing. The Druids continue to secretly with much the same traditions. The widespread problem of harmful, harmful circumstances such as razor blades, drugs, poison, needles, etc., being placed in Halloween treats here in America is no accident. Testimonies of several ex-Satanists show that these children killed and injured by the treats or sacrifices to Satan or Shamhain. Satanists throughout the world continue to, to perform human sacrifices on Halloween. Is this something you want your child to participate in? And they give some references here. And the other one I have, should Christians celebrate Halloween is by William Snevelin. Snevelin. An old prophet says, when you suck from the devil, use a long spoon. Presumably, no genuine Christian would want to suck with the devil at all, and yet many may be doing so in ignorance. As a former witch, William says, he was a witch high priest, now saved by Jesus, I was astonished by how many Christians let their children celebrate Halloween. Some churches even sponsor haunted houses and similar events on what is the number one satanic holiday of the year. Halloween used to be called Champagne, and it's still celebrated as an ancient pagan festival of the dead by witches all over the world. Unfortunately, just giving the date a holy name like All Hallows Eve or All Saints Eve cannot change its grisly character. Halloween is an occasion when the ancient gods, usually demons, are worshipped with human sacrifice. The Apostle Paul warned us, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they're sacrificed to devils and not to God, and I would not that we should have fellowship with devils, 1 Corinthians 10, 20. If you are a Christian parent, God has given you a precious responsibility in your children. Remember their ability to resist spiritual wickedness is much less than yours. If you allow your children to participate in Halloween, trick-or-treating, costume parties, etc., you are allowing them to play on the devil's turf and Satan will definitely press his home court advantage. You are opening up doorways into their young lives for evil by bringing them into a kind of fellowship with these ancient gods. We are commanded not to become involved with the unfruitful works of darkness in Ephesians 5.11. Both from my experience as a witch and still getting saved, and since getting saved as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I have seen far too many examples of how breaking this command works in our lives. Remember when we have God's promise of protection for ourselves and our children. That promise may not hold if we allow our children to celebrate this dark holiday. Case after case has come to us of children in rebellion. In many of these families, the problem can be traced back to the children being exposed to Halloween as a young child. It is hard enough to raise children these days in a godly way without exposing them to Satan's realm. In his book, Lucifer to Throne, author William Shevlin yes. <laughs> describes his search for spiritual power that led him on a journey from simple witchcraft to bloodlust vampirism that was only terminated years later by, his, by the cleansing blood of Jesus. His book will help you to avoid or escape the occult involvement and lead others out of simple, similar bondage. Is that it? All right. Well, don't celebrate Halloween, people. No. Hallelujah.